my dear children, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Sometimes students ask me, Father, what do you consider as the most important qualities of a good priest, good religious, good Christian? I tell them, to me, these are my ideal qualities. As St. Ignatius of Loyola said, pray as though everything depended on God. First one, a life of prayer. Work as though everything depended on you. A life of hard work. These two things are focused on yourself. Two other things that are very important for me, especially in dealing with others, I tell them, you need to be known as a humble person, and compassionate person. All other things do not matter much to me, I used to tell them. In your relationship with others, you should be known as a humble person and compassionate persons. Some people tell me that they are praying quite a lot. What is the fruit of an authentic prayer life, my dear brothers and sisters? If you pray genuinely and sincerely, you will have enormous energy for hard work. You will not be lazy. You know how much our Lord worked during the three years of public ministry. He was in union with the Father, frequently retired to lonely places to pray, but then he did not neglect his work. He did not neglect doing the will of the Father. And then how he dealt with people. You will become more and more humble as a fruit of your prayer life. You will become more and more compassionate. Compassionate means you can't keep quiet when other people suffer. Did our Lord keep quiet when others suffered? Today's liturgy especially focuses on humility first and foremost. We heard it read from the book of Sirach. It is told to us, perform your task in meekness, in humility. Do not try to show that you are superior to others. Humble people will always be loved. The Bible uses the harshest words, not against adulterers or murderers, but against the proud people. If at all the Lord asked us to learn something from Him, it is only to be meek and humble like Him. He did not ask us to do extraordinary miracles like Him, but He asked us, learn from me. For I am meek and humble of heart. That's what. So here do everything in meekness. I like another passage. Luke chapter 17 verse 10. You also, the Lord says, Having done all that is commanded of you, Say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what is our duty. Sometimes some of the parents are lamenting, so much I worked hard for my children, they don't think of me, they don't bother about me. The Lord says, we as Christians should not lament like that. What a good Catholic parent should do, I did, that's all. Even if my children forget me, no problem. I did my duty, I am only a useless servant. That is the attitude. Again, on numerous occasions I have quoted this verse of St. Paul, first letter to the Corinthians, fourth chapter. What is it you have that you have not received? 
If all that you have is what you have received from the Lord, why do you boast? We have no reason to boast, my dear brothers and sisters. The greater you are, the more you must humble yourself. Everything God gave you. You had a good education, thanks to your parents. You have a good job, thanks to the goodness of God. Everything God gave you, the greater you are, the more you have to humble yourself. We are reminded of our own frailty, our identity, which has no meaning without God in our lives. Be humble. Do not try to dominate people all the time. Be your spouse or husband or children. Do not speak too highly of yourself. Then you are not a Christian. You are not a man of prayer. You are not a woman of prayer. The more you pray, the more you will know your brokenness, your dependence on God, your dependence on others. A beautiful passage. The passage starts, my son, that means we should be willing to listen. Some people will go on talking, they will never listen. Lack of humility. Listen to others. The Lord tells us very clearly, listen to what others are saying. If you are not able to listen to your family members, you will never listen to God also. That's very clear. If you are not listening to your spouse, your children, your brothers and sisters, you will not know to listen to God either, my dear brothers and sisters. And then we come to today's gospel passage taken from the book of, uh, from the gospel of Luke chapter 14. Jesus is invited by the Pharisee. Everybody is looking at Jesus. The first part of that chapter is not read to us today. He invited him all right. All were looking at Jesus to find fault with him. First incident is whether he would heal a person whose hands and legs were swollen. Jesus knew their mind. But Jesus healed the man and then told them, If your son has fallen or is sick or ox, have fallen into the well, will you keep quiet? Why are you all thinking about me, whether I am doing right or wrong? It is never a wrong time to do good, Jesus told them. They were observing Jesus and Jesus was there doing good. And the second part is what was read to us today. First, Jesus looked at the guests. They were all fighting for the best place possible. Jesus told them, come on, what matters is your place before God. You will be humiliated if you choose the first place and the guest and the host who invited you comes and tells you, come on, give this place to somebody else. Choose instead the last place. Maybe you will be honored when the host comes. Why do you sit here in the last place? Go up higher. Jesus is observing what we are doing. My dear brothers and sisters, this is one of the incidents. Now bring Jesus to your home. May Jesus be your guest. In some families and even in convents and all, it's beautifully written. Jesus is the unseen guest here. He sees everything. He hears everything. In order to make people realize that we should lead lives which are approved by Jesus. If Jesus were to come to your house and observe what you are doing, what are the corrections he will give? Suppose you are fighting. Come on, why are you fighting in this family? Suppose you are selfish. Don't participate in the work of the family. All the time you are watching TV, the other person is only cooking, washing, cleaning. 
Will Jesus approve of it? My dear brothers and sisters, bring Jesus to your family today. Here Jesus gives a correction. You are all hurrying up for the first place. Now Jesus will say so many things. Maybe he will tell one child, you have not yet done your homework. You are too much interested in cartoon. Will Jesus approve what you are doing? You have your own brothers and sisters. You don't want to share only. You want to have the best piece of cake. Everything best. Will Jesus approve of it? Surely he is telling, Jesus will not approve. The children understand much better. Jesus will not approve. You are not bothered about others. Your family members are sick. You think, what does it matter to me? Will Jesus approve of it? We are called to live lives which are approved by Jesus. Yesterday I was telling, the reading was the parable of the talents. You know, the man who got five talents and two talents, doubled the talents. And then Jesus said, well then, good and faithful servant. You are faithful in little. I will entrust you with much more. Enter into the joy of the master. Everybody longs for appreciation, praise, recognition. If you do something good in the parish, we want a Scottish what matters. And here Jesus disapproves their longing for prestige, importance, privilege. This is the lesson to their guests. And then Jesus tells something to their host also. He looked at the people, all of them well dressed, rich, the relatives of the host, and then some rich people who were their neighbors. Not even one poor person is there. These people can eat as much in their own respective homes. Jesus tells them, when you invite people, come on, invite also some poor people who can't afford that meal. As I said, be compassionate to people who have nothing to eat. Then the Father will reward you. If I invite this person, he will invite me in return. Such people only are often invited. Do something to the poor. There are so many other people who can't have a good meal. Why can't you think of them? Why can't you also invite them? See the compassionate heart of Jesus. A lesson to the host. A lesson to the guests. Jesus is watching what we are doing. Sometimes we go on helping people who can help us in return. But think of the poor, the others, the abandoned, the maimed, the lame, the blind. They have nobody to care for them. Invite them also. That's what Jesus says. My dear brothers and sisters, what beautiful lesson today the Lord gives us. Do not go on saying that I am praying. Show the fruit of your prayer life by working hard for your brothers and sisters. By becoming more and more humble. More and more humble. I always say, what is humility? Humus means earth. We are from the earth. We have to return to the earth. My own definition of humility. Humility is the recognition that we need God, we need others. We need God, we need others. Don't we don't care masters. We need God. Respect people. Acknowledge the contribution of God in your life. Acknowledge the contribution of your brothers and sisters in your life. Be humble, be compassionate like the Lord. He has done so many things to me. How can I keep quiet when other people suffer? Be compassionate. Think of those who have nothing. This is our own occasion. So, I repeat to you also today. Be prayerful. Be hardworking and when you are dealing with others, be humble and compassionate. Amen.